crushed by his own castle while the hero saves her true love. How original. Turn and I'll rip your eyes out. Let's see what else you've got. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They celebrate the town parties for many nights, and they all live happily ever after. Everyone but me. Tell me, what happened to my servants, my friends? They're with me when the castle falls. Do they die as well, or are they so insignificant that their lives mean nothing to you? Calm down. After you killed me? <laughs> you took everything I loved and burned it, all for your perfect little story. And now you're telling me to calm down. <laughs> Don't worry. My mind's never been so clear. Put down your pen and turn around, slowly, and don't try anything stupid. I want to show you the face of who you've been torturing all this time for fun. What do you think? Am I exactly as you... No. Let's skip this part. I'm not a delusional fan trying to change the ending. You know exactly who I am. I've been whispering words in your ears for a long, long time, telling you what I'd say and what I'd do. You made me, but I also made you. Do you honestly think your readers kept coming back because of your pretty little heroine saving the day again and again? They came for me. I am your story. You built the entire damn thing around me. I figured it all out a long time ago, back when you wrote about me accidentally activating a portal into a strange land with flying cars and glass spires. Just because you threw that quest in the trash, which, admittedly, I'm grateful for, that place is gloriously lifeless, you still wrote it. It still happened. I've been here many times since. You are the one who never noticed. You didn't keep track. What? Did you think whenever you skipped a few hours or years, or followed another character, I simply froze, waited like a good boy for your return? Should have made me a fool, an idiot who lost his mind to bloodlust. But no. You made me a genius. You did this to yourself. No, no. Well... Yes, I am going to kill you, but not yet. You have work to do. You, my little brilliant and naive pet, are going to save my life. You are going to stop the collapse, keep my people alive, and finally let me kill those bloody bastards you adore so dearly. And you're going to do it. Try anything, and I'll waltz on back here and take your family with me. I wonder how they'd scream from my dungeon. The one you built so carefully, researched so heavily to ensure it was the epitome of hell on earth. Well, my earth. I won't do it. <laughs> oh, that's rich. You, of all people, know how much I'm holding back right now. I want you to suffer 
bleed, beg me for mercy, forgiveness. But you won't get any, not a single drop of it. And who's responsible for that again? Ah, uh -uh. don't scream. There we go, that's one. Now mine. <sighs> Gotta say, I'm not a fan of the self-mutilation ritual. A cut in the palm, a mix of foreign blood. Couldn't have chosen a cleaner way, could you? So romantic, though. Always an air of Eros in everything you wrote about me. If I knew any better, I'd say you fell from me the day you imagined me. I'm all of your guilty pleasures and secrets balled up into one. But I don't think lovers brutally murder one another. Or maybe they do. Everybody loves a bit of tragedy. Come on. Let's intertwine fingers and fall into the world of your making. Good morning. You took the fall pretty well. No vomit in sight. The nausea will fade. You'll stop seeing double soon enough. Oh, right. Think of that as a gift keeping my puppy safe in their cozy doghouse. Guess you have to help me now, otherwise all of this will bury you alive. No, it hasn't happened yet. After I learned about your invention of the world, I did a bit of research of my own. Snuck around, saw what you wrote, recorded how long it'd take to come true. I discovered some interesting things. While you dictate the big events of this world, you don't control every moment of it, nor every person here. They're real, in one way or another. They have personalities, entire lives, but they're no more than a passing face in your narrative. I don't exactly know where all this exists. If this is the product of never-ending imagination, but this mm, dimension, we'll call it, it functions similarly to yours. Time passes the same. If you write about a big event happening in five years, it'll take five years to catch up. In addition to whatever else it needs to complete still. It's like a staircase with constant construction on the end. In other words, I die in about two years and three months. That's how long you have to make it right. Oh, I don't mind keeping you chained up for that long. You already sit at a table every day. Not much has changed. I'm kidding. I'll take you on little rewriting the ending walks once in a while. Stretch your legs, save the world, light work. You'll find everything you'll need here on the desk. All of your notebooks, and your excessive amount of fine point sharpie pen boxes. You should really try something more thrilling to write with. You drill through these like an addict. It's terrible for the environment. Killing two worlds at once. You don't remember? I guess it's been a while since you made it. When you wrote about my entrance into your realm, you created a character from your world. A sweet little thing who was entranced by our lands and magic. Any idea what happened to him? I killed him. Drained his blood for safekeeping and ease of travel. You wanted security and urgency in the story. A limit to my movement, but not too heavy of one. Made me break his neck before I could trap him. 
Damn you and your loophole obsession. Speaking of blood, have you ever considered giving me more vampiric traits? Endless youth, pretty fangs. I'd look good in some fangs. Why are you shocked? You made me do it. Wrote it yourself. I may be twisted, but you're a sheltered mass murderer. Maybe we are a good pair. Ah, food's here. Figured you'd be hungry. Recognize him? My most faithful butler and greatest assassin. Oh, don't worry. They know you're an assassin. Don't ask them how. Best if you don't know. No, I haven't told any of them. Just because I have to endure the mind-shattering truth that we are all make-believe doesn't mean they have to. Here you are. Some onion bread soup, olive salad, and chicken. Go on, go ahead. Starving yourself falls under the stupid act. Blood's still fresh, so I can go back and grab someone from your house if you're so desperate for company. Uh-huh. Didn't think so. Hmm. Whereabouts are we in the timeline? It's winter. The heroine's coming-of-age party wasn't long ago. That was pretty fun to ruin. The hunt will start in a few months. Oh, I know. I'll be leading some beasts out of the caverns soon. Release them along the border, get Loverboy into battle, chop them up real bad. Uh, don't change that. I don't want to kill him in battle. It's far too anticlimactic for my taste. Oh, that's an excellent idea. I should bring you into the caves, have you run around with the beasts, get them nice and warmed up for the big day. I like your thinking. Ah, but you are imagining it. I know how your mind works. Always making a story instead of a solution, looking for opportunities to make a scenario more alive and thrilling. Well, hurry up. Your food is going to get cold and I detest wasting food. And over there is Kalta, where I grew up. It must be strange, seeing the maps you sketched come to life. Now you know how fucked up I felt when I found a draft on a napkin. Relax, I'm not going to strangle you on here. It would spook the horse. I know. I'm both chivalrous and thoughtful. And what? Let you gallop away in a pathetic attempt to escape me? First off, I'm a much faster rider. Second off, you wouldn't last a night between the cold and the monsters lurking about. And I'm not talking about the animals. Third off... You can figure out the rest. We're taking a detour. The cemetery's hidden up here. And my brother's waiting. He's the first person you took from me. A very effective choice. It really triggered my first rampage. Made me the blood prince. Banished and wicked. The perfect villain origin. Don't waste the air on apologies. Your sincerity makes me sick. We'll stop here. I don't want the horse trampling any beds. <clears throat> One sec. I'll tie her up before you... <laughs> a 
That was graceful. <gasps> and you tore the pants I just gave you. <laughs> you look like a dragged rat. Are you really seeing my brother like that? Hmm. On second thought, it's rather fitting. Chase, you're here, right? I... I swore to you that I'd give you your killer's head. Let you lay in peace. I'm still looking for the one who drowned you. But I brought someone else. Someone responsible for everything that happened. The one who tore us apart took you away from me. I'll bring you their head once I'm done with them. It'll tie you over until I find the real one. Good. There's that fearful glare again. Your shivers really add to the delivery of this beautiful moment. I can feel a bit of closure already. Hmm. That's a lie. I'm constantly dreaming about how I should end you. There are so many good options. It's a shame I can't do them all. <clears throat> uh, sorry. Back to you, Jace. <sighs> Today, you'd be old enough to have your first drink of alcohol. So, I brought you my favorite. Don't drink it too fast. You'll regret it the next day. And I also have your favorite candy. Honeyed snow with a drop of plum juice. Watch over us, Jace. We're going to rewrite the world you love. I couldn't protect you, but I'll save everything you stood for. Well, that wraps up our tour for the day. Best we head back and get you nice and tucked into your kennel. <laughs> are you crying? Why the hell are you crying? None of this is real. Your crying add nothing. Move. Get back on the horse and shut up. I'm this close to stuffing you into a hole and adding another stone. Oh, is that so? Then why'd you do it, huh? Why the hell did you do it? He was a boy. A fucking kid. He... He never hurt anyone. He was everything to me. And you, you used him as a fucking narrative device to drive me mad. Well, congratulations, it worked. Get on the horse. And pray to whichever god you wrote that I don't tear your insides out right here, right now. Go. <laughs>